Before I get into this video, I want to give a quick shout out to Bradley from Bradley Animation. I've been messing with Blender and Geometry Nodes recently and Bradley and the users from his channel have been an incredible resource for me to learn and share knowledge. The video is about this. It is one of the first uh, Houdini tutorials I went through and uh, created, well, when learning about uh, parametric modeling. Uh, Houdini is obviously the uh, program to beat but the learning curve to get into Houdini, Houdini is um, it's quite steep. So I've been getting into Blender and the obvious thing I wanted to do is try to um, replicate that with the geometry nodes. Really just to wrap my head around this, the simple concept of uh, casting an object over another one and then you know making it into a rope locking object. It uses a handful of nodes, and it's a really great introduction to Blender and geometry nodes, in my opinion. Instead of going and creating this from scratch, like many other tutorials, I'm actually just going to go over how I um, how I created this and the nodes that you should probably look out for. I used a lot of these nodes here, really just to capture GIFs as well so you can see I've got a whole bunch of like switches here and um, what's going on is there's a uh, scene time that's divided into the transform of this initial curve object which is creating the um, the animation that you're seeing um, it was just a little nicer to have something automated run through and um, show how this works Another thing that I realized was that um, geometry proximity, it works the way that um, <laughs> you, you think it would, but I had a misunderstanding of how that node worked. I actually thought that it would take the normal of an object and actually you know, contract it based on that, but that is not how it works. And the node that you want to use is a raycast node, which is what I have here. Let me see if I can just get some more screen real estate. So uh, let me go through. So here's, I started off with this curve object. It's going through a transform, which is uh, making it do this. And the other thing that I've got going on here with a lot of these switches is really just a, um, a collection of objects. So this is um, similar to that Houdini tutorial where I wanted to put objects together and have the ropes simulated around them together. Um, you know, I was testing against a sphere, a cone, but yeah, this was just an easy way to do it. Um, this node here, the convex hull, is a really great way just to make it watertight. Um, and another thing about uh, convex hull is that it's just a nice uh, procedural way or node that will take an object and make it into an object that you can you know, use for simulating objects in a scene. So I think if you ever needed to make an object watertight, you would use uh, this node. So you, know, you get from that to, to this by using it. Um, if I have a look at the raycast, I'll, I'll actually have a look at this node. So there is a raycast which runs through these two um, position and normals of this object. And um, you'll, you'll just have to ignore these switches that I'm using because I use them really just for debugging. So if I have a look at this set position, um, you can see what it's doing here. And if I didn't use this uh, convex hull, you can see that um, the actual raycast node doesn't work properly against it because of, um, I'll just get a join geometry node. Because it's, it's doing what it wants to do, but because of all the surfaces within side of it, um, it, it's just having a very hard time 
to discern where it should go, if that makes sense. So a convex hull is what you would use to um, mitigate this problem here. Well, re remove it entirely, actually. Um, so, so we've got this. Once you set this kind of thing up, so you've got your curve. I have it running through a transform, scene time. The divide is really just to um, make it spin slower because if I muted this, you can see that scene time would really wreck what's going on here. And obviously I've got a um, combine XYZ node. Um, so I'm really just uh, locking the scale to one axis. So here, got an object, convex hull, raycast node look, looks like this. Uh, this is default settings basically. Um, I changed the array length to be a, a little uh, shorter. I believe default's at 100. And then we get to this, the curve to mesh. You'll be using this a lot if you get into geometry nodes. Um, I have the radius set to one, and this is where, really where the power of um, geo nodes comes in. So, you know, just to be able to do that and change the radius of an object on the fly, you know, to iterate like that is really powerful. Changing the resolution of the curve. So yeah, th this is really what you're doing it for. Um, at work, I have a lot of applications for this. Um, if we didn't have a geometry nodes solution, you'll find artists just spending a huge amount of time replicating that uh, the old fashioned way, which is not fun. Um, I've got a little scale here. And so what I would do is I would adjust the radius to sort of fit around this object. And then I would bump the scale around that just to kind of be a little more snug, if that makes sense. Uh, this um, here, set material is pretty straightforward. It is, um, I just really wanted to apply something else to differentiate it. Um, but you can see that, you know, maybe that doesn't work too well. And maybe that's better. It isn't perfect. It's close enough to get it to this point is, um, you know, really good uh, as an automated thing. Um, it's very common in uh, at work for me anyway, just to maybe get something 80% there and then touch up verts. You know, there might be clipping here that you'd like to address for a game or something else if you wanted to, you know, use it for something. But yeah, that, that's pretty much what I put together. And I'm hoping anyone else creating ropes <laughs> Uh, finds this useful. Anyone, you know, getting into geometry nodes. So that's a, a very quick video from me. Uh, thanks for watching.